Hello, my name is Padre Phil Craven. I'm the station chaplain at the Defence Academy. It is wonderful to be able to bring you a word this morning. Our passage is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, beginning at verse 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime, you received good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And beside all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, Send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses, and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Amen. I used to run all the time, but then I began to fall out of the way of doing it. So one Thursday evening, I decided I was going to start running again. So I sat down at my computer and began planning my running schedule. I didn't realise that putting together a running schedule would take up so much of my time and attention. But of course I figured that no one starts a new training schedule on a Thursday. You have to start on a Monday. It's the beginning of the week. So I planned to start on Monday. And when it got to Monday, life began to take over and I couldn't run that day for various reasons. Then the following day and the Tuesday, I was tired from the previous day. Best not to run while you're tired. On Wednesday, a friend came round and it was rude not to eat pizza and drink beer all night. And all of a sudden, it was now Thursday. And I thought, well, who starts a new training schedule on a Thursday? You have to start on a Monday. That's the beginning of the week. And so the story repeated itself week after week. I spent so much time focusing on devising a schedule that I never actually got out to run. In our passage today, Jesus tells a parable about attention and where our attention lies. And he tells those gathered a parable about a rich man and a poor man. And the passage opens with a wonderful description of our two characters. First, we have the rich man dressed in the finest of garments. He lived in a big house with big gates to keep all the riffraff away. And then we have the beggar, Lazarus, who sat at the rich man's gate desperate for a stray chicken or loose bread roll to, to, to roll out of the house so that he could eat. 
The rich man would have passed Lazarus every day as he came in and out of his massive house. But the rich man never paid any attention to Lazarus. Lazarus is not only a hungry beggar, it tells us he's covered in sores. And it tells us that the dogs used to come and lick his sores. And so we have this contrast set up between these two men. The rich man who covered himself in the finest of things and Lazarus who couldn't even cover his own sores. The rich man didn't pay a bit of attention to Lazarus. But Lazarus watched the rich man each and every day. Eventually both men died and were buried. No doubt the rich man had a fine funeral, expensive tomb, lots of people to mourn. And the beggar, a pauper's grave, no one to remember him. And Jesus goes on in this parable and he says the rich man who enjoyed the finest of things in this life suddenly found himself on the other side. In the life to come, the rich man could not take all that he had gathered around him. Instead, Lazarus, the one who had nothing, gained everything. And the passage goes on to tell us that Lazarus was by Abraham's side, a place of real and true honour. The rich man can't quite believe what's happening. And so he asks if Lazarus can come and help him. The rich man had never paid attention to Lazarus in this life, but suddenly wanted Lazarus's help when the shoe was on the other foot. But there was now an impassable gap between the two. In this life, the gap could have easily been managed with the outstretch of an arm to bless, to love, to care, to cherish. But in the life to come, it was too late. The rich man then asks Abraham to send Lazarus back to speak to his family to convince them to live a better life. But again, the rich man He's not thinking about Lazarus or anyone else. He's just thinking about himself, his own. He's missing the point. Abraham replies in verse 29 saying, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. In essence, he's saying they've got the entire Old Testament, all the stories of Moses, the prophets, the stories of faithfulness, love and mercy, it's all there. And so this odd passage draws to a close with the rich man asking that if a dead person comes back to life, then people would surely believe. Again, the rich man fails to pay attention to the scriptures and its teaching. He's missing the point. If people will not listen to the stories of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, if they don't listen to the prophets like Samuel, Elijah, Jeremiah, if they don't listen to the kings like David, then they're not going to be convinced that someone has been raised from the dead. And so we come back to where we started. Every day the rich man did not pay any attention to those around him. The poor, the broken, the lost. The rich man didn't even see Lazarus sitting at his own gate. He didn't pay attention to the scriptures that told him how to live a blessed life by caring for the sick, the destitute. The destitute. And he didn't pay any attention to the God who was reaching out to him each and every day. The passage is deeply challenging. It challenge, challenges us to pay attention to those around us and to reach out to them 
while we can. Reach out today to your neighbours across the garden fence because they might be struggling in silence. Reach out to your friends today on the phone because they might be hiding a brokenness. Or reach out to the stranger sitting on their own on a park bench because they may have buried their pain. Reach out today. Pay attention today. Bless those around you today while we can. Amen.